Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the Upper Terrace and Signature Style Saturday. We have so many fun projects going today. We're going to topiary a sunshine ligustrum. We are going to start an Easter basket for our Easter table. I want to show you a really dramatic vignette that I'm creating in the back, which is almost finished, starring uh, Platinum Beauty Lamandra. Well, what do you say, Stuart? Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, I had a group of about 30 here day before yesterday. They were from a local walking group from a nearby church. And a number of people were asking me if I could name one plant that was Oklahoma tough for the summer and had really good, almost four season interest, what would it be? And the first thing that came to mind for me is sunshine ligustrum, or I say ligustrum, you say ligustrum. Um, whichever way you say it, it is absolutely wonderful in the garden. And I grow it in a couple of different ways. I like it kind of full and flouncy. You know, it can get to be three to six feet high or three to four feet wide. And I like to grow it beautifully where there's kind of movement to it and when there's a breeze it kind of blows but where I like to use it a little more dramatically and that is when I kind of topiary it now at the other house I topiaried it into kind of a conical shape and I used it back in the potage here on the upper terrace right in proximity to the beautiful East Friesland salvia. This is where I think it really is gorgeous. So you might want to screenshot this image because it is just beautiful with the blue and with the pinks. It's just gorgeous. But I also like the fact that up there I have it clipped a little bit more tightly. So how do you do that? Well, as I've always said, when you are topiaring anything, you just have to be a little bit brave. Remember, if you make a wrong cut, it will grow out. So this one, and by the way, when you are shopping for yours, and I just saw a whole big display of these at my local, uh, I think, I can't remember if it was Lowe's or, or Home Depot, but they had some gorgeous specimens. And what you wanna do is kind of buy one that's already assuming the shape that you want. So if you want it to be tall and flouncy, buy one that's kind of already assuming that shape. But if you're like me, and a lot of times you are clipping and pruning them into more of a spherical form or kind of a smushed spherical form, kind of like a pancake form, then buy it as close to that shape as possible. So you can do this in a number of different ways, you guys. I sometimes just use scissors and you can do that because when the new growth comes out, it is very tender. It is very easy to clip. You don't have to have any special tools whatsoever, just an inexpensive pair of shears that you use just for that purpose. And sometimes after it's already in place and I'm just trying to kind of clip it to keep it within that globular form, then I use scissors. When I'm first establishing the form, then I might want to use some long handled pruners and you guys know I have two favorites. This is my uh, long hand or long bladed, I should say, Barnell pear, pear. And uh, that's hard to say. That's hard for me to say. And I can definitely use these. And I kind of start at the top and I work my way down. Sometimes when I'm pruning them before they get in the ground, these are almost a little too long. And in that case, I might use these Okasuni pruners because they're not quite as long. And when I'm working on a table or something, they're a little bit more manageable in size. And typically, you know, when I do this, it's a no-brainer. It's common sense. Most of gardening is common sense. I try to have something underneath to catch my clippings. And then you just go around the perimeter. This is easy, but the difference between the fore and after, I think, is pretty amazing. And the thing is that this ligustrum can, it's hardy all the way down to zone six. So my family in Indiana was asking me if they can grow it, and I said, oh yes, I think you can grow it. And especially now with every place getting a little bit hotter, look to a lot of the plants that have historically just been for the south. And most of them 
Um, and certainly most of them in the Southern Living Plant Collection would fall into that category. So I just try to get as much symmetry as possible. And by the way, if you want to take some of those clipping, clippings and use them somehow in sweet, tiny little bouquets, they would be perfect for spring, perfect for Easter, without much fuss at all. And when you have these established in your garden, not only that, you're just pruning from your own landscape, and it's an inexpensive way to make lots of tiny bouquets. Now, I like the definition to be as much on the bottom as on the top. I kind of needed a bigger table, you guys. <laughs> so here is the first of my questions of the day. Do you guys, if you grow ligustrum, do you like it more flouncy and cascading and full and billowy like that that I have on the east side? Or do you like it in a more spherical shape? Or do you like it both ways? Can you swing both ways? So I, okay, so look at how pretty that's looking. And periodically I just torque it and then you can see which is the prettiest vantage point, which is the most perfect. And by the way, of course, over time, as you continue to shear it and as it continues to grow, it gets more perfect in form. If you're kind of a perfectionist like moi, it gets more perfect in time. So we're gonna put like a plant profile up right here, Stuart on it and so you guys can screenshot this and look at its profile and see if it's right for you. So as I have said many many times probably one of my favorite combos is this chartreuse yellow especially in the springtime and purple. So when all of my larkspur is in bloom it's going to be fabulous. So here's kind of a planting tip. If you are going to marry this plant with some others that are blooming, I highly recommend any kind of blue salvias. Um, I would recommend larkspur. I would recommend any kind of veronicas in that lavender. But if you like really bright primary colors, I think it would look great with red too. So right now, my tulip palette in the front, mostly pinks, but boy, this would look gorgeous if you had a really, really deep red as well. So there you go. Here is a gift that keeps on giving through the seasons in containers. And by the way, it does brilliantly in containers. Um, I have even planted it in window boxes before. It looks great in kind of an urn where you've got this tight spherical form and then cascading around the edge and down the sides. You could have some kind of seasonal color. I think it would be fabulous with some kind of uh, cascading calibracoa or million bells in red or in purple. I think that would be fabulous. Uh, scaviola in that wonderful periwinkle blue purple would be great. So it's just kind of how do you like to play with your Crayola color box. So there you go. One of my favorite plants to play with, Sunshine Ligustrum. And as always, you guys, I'll put a link below. Well, come on in, everyone, to at least the dining patio in the backyard. I've got it, I would say, 95% staged the way I want it to be. There'll definitely be more plants coming in that will populate the plant stands and things. 
but, and you can probably hear in the background, Javier and Sergio working on the other side, but I want you to come in because this is what I've been going for. This money shot, so that when all of this stuff is grown out and filled in and mature, it will be almost gasp worthy when you come through the gate. And how I am achieving that is a plant I'm a little bit obsessed with right now. I have shown it to you in the past. I kind of thought I might want it up on the steps, but I have changed my mind on that. And it is Platinum Beauty Lamandra. Now this is hardy only down to zone eight, but that's why I've got it in pots so I can bring it in. But when you come and you get the long view over here to this planter box and i will be putting in one more stepping stone here it looks absolutely stunning flanking either side of the planter box and i love the way i love the way when you come into the backyard it's a completely different emotional vibe because the color palette is different there's lots of grays it has more of a pacific northwest vibe to it i think more maybe even a little bit mediterranean or coastal and because of that i wanted a different color palette so back here i am playing with the more intense reds oranges golds those kind of colors in my crayon box and the platinum beauty lamandra gives me just the color kind of neutral color palette that i want and definitely a different more cascading form for all of these plants to play on so in the back here i've used lots and lots of mounded plants which i love that rounded mounded form i've showed you guys my inspiration picture a number of times so what i wanted was a dramatic counterpoint to these rounded forms because that's kind of what gives emotional visual sensual interest i think and the Platinum Beauty is giving just the feel that I want. I love the way it cascades. I love the way that the variegation in it um, kind of brightens up this space and how it punctuates the corner. And then right now, I've got just my favorite kind of tomato-y red. I've got that in the box. And obviously, I don't know, Stuart, if you can see, there's, there's already bees over here. Oh, they're, cool. they're already loving my composition. Your pop of color. My pop of color. And, and so these reds. Now, eventually, the geraniums, once it starts getting hotter and it's time for peppers and cherry tomatoes and things like that to cascade over the side these will move and this will be an edimental container with really ornamental edibles that i think will be beautiful in here and i can just see those red cherry tomatoes cascading over and kind of insinuating themselves into the Platinum Beauty Lamandra. Now in the past, this is kind of what I'm excited about. Um, I, I have used this with some people that I've worked with in their gardens, largely in a pool setting where we had them running up and down the steps, walking down to a pool, flanking the corners of poolside because they can really handle the heat, they can handle um, reflected light off of pavement. But here I wanted to use them in a completely different way. And it's all trial and error, so I just kind of kept moving them around until I got had my aha moment that this is where they need to be. And I think it's beautiful. So I've got this kind of verticality of them they even have a little bit of these flower heads in here and then i've got beautiful bold leaved just red pelargoniums and then i've got some elephant bush now this will again change a little bit as it gets warmer as i put in edibles but what will remain what the fixture plant is is this platinum beauty lamandra because oh yeah the elephant the <laughs> elephant bush and this this will probably be relocated as i said the geraniums will probably be relocated but right now what i know for sure is that this stuff is going to stay here for the duration and into fall and um, up until it goes into the greenhouse in um when temperatures start to really dive so i think it looks wonderful Stuart here 
here, let's put up a profile of Lamandra, a Platinum Beauty, and it truly is beautiful in all of its grassiness. We'll definitely put a link below, but here's my second question of the day. Actually, it's got two parts. If you grow Platinum Beauty, or if you are going to grow it, what colors would you grow it with? I can see it looking just dynamite with um, maybe Goldsturm, Rubecchia, some of the gold colors. Magenta, I think, would be a really dark cardinal color. I think that would be beautiful. But it could also play with softer colors, whites and pinks. But this is how I'm using it. So if you grow it, if you plan to grow it, in the comments below, give us all more ideas of how this brilliant, really tough plant could be styled. Um, and Stuart right here, let's put up a picture of not only the plant profile, but let's put up a picture of how we styled it over at my friend Wendy's by her pool. We had it cascading up and down the steps. It was such a fun, such a fun day when we styled that. So a couple of different ways, but I think it's it's going to give me just the look, just the feel that I want back here on the patio. I'll have not only the brilliant architectural look of it, but it's got movement and it kind of blows and it cascades and it's got kind of a waterfall effect. So I, I love that. Tell me your thoughts. Make sure to comment below. Well, here's another design tip. If you decide on your color palette for a space, see if you can carry that color palette through the seasons. So obviously when it gets to be summer, I'll have the intense reds of things like salvias and, and maybe coleus and, and just different, um, oh, just different kinds of, uh, maybe pineapple sage, plants like that, that will bring in the red tones that I want. But I'm mindful of that even in the spring. So last year when I was composing, I was thinking about what I wanted to do back here, I knew that that was the emotional vibe that I wanted to have, was with those reds, golds, and colors that were a little bit deeper. And so I took that into account and the color palette back here is decidedly more orange and red and gold. And you can see just a hint of that beginning right now with these tulips. I can't exactly remember which blend from Color Blends this was, but I love its arching form. And I'm going to take note of that. All of the ones that I planted in the front tend to be very chalice shaped, very cup shaped, and kind of vertical and squatty. This, the stem, is beautiful and it kind of arches and even before it blooms the bud itself is much more tapered and delicate and I love that so in my garden journal I am going to be recording that this is a blend I definitely want to use again next next year I'll research what it was and I'll make sure to put it in the links below one of my favorite things about spring, and particularly around Easter, is that I can cut things from my garden, whether they are in bloom or they're not, to make my own Easter baskets, Easter buckets, Easter boots, whatever it is that I am composing for the Easter holiday. And I love this time of year because there's kind of this uh, transition between the woody brown of winter and the fresh green of spring, and I love of that and I think it especially speaks to kind of almost what I would call a nest aesthetic for Easter and one of my favorite plants to cut from really almost any time of year is Encore Azaleas. So I've got some here that are not yet in bloom but they have just what I want. They've got the fresh green growth that's coming out of the woody stem and in some cases Yes, neon, and in some cases you can even see on the woody stem where the tender little new buds are, the new tufts of green that are coming out. So I am willing, as profusely as they bloom on this hedge here, I am willing to sacrifice a couple of the blooms, these have buds in them, but simply because I love the way the canes look and I love the color of the foliage on it. So I'm cutting some of these to use in an Easter basket composition. 
and soon enough it will be April which to me is all about azaleas right now it's still a little bit early but boy by the time these are in full bloom they'll be spectacular so I've got some here that I'm using just for the stems and the leaf uh, leaf color and the foliage but let's go around here I see a oh a few early blooms and I'm going to cut those I've often mentioned that I have mostly whites and pinks in terms of Encore Zellias because I like that romantic color palette, but the back has a different vibe. So I have planted some autumn coral, these little autumn coral right here. I think it's going to be absolutely beautiful. These guys are dwarf and they're going to top out at two and a half inches high and three feet wide or two and a half feet I should say high and three feet wide and so once they ultimately mature I may move some of them to the back but right now it fits in perfectly with my color scheme and with my low mounding plant palette that I have surrounding the dining deck and I think it's going to be beautiful and look here I can't wait because oh, I am I seeing I do too they have a much like uh yeah, yeah, the foliage, is, yeah, yeah it, it tends to be more of a sword-like leaf, cool. and I've got a bud on it already, oh, and these were just planted. So when these, oh yeah, so when these are in full bloom, I will definitely show you those, because April is, I just think April is azalea month, and specifically our favorite reblooming azaleas on Core Azalea. So nice, they bloom twice. Well, as long as I'm going to be going around to the other side of the cottage, I am going to take this moment to kind of groom along the brick wall a little bit and just appreciate how spectacular the tulips look. I mean, at first I wasn't real pleased with the performance of the blend, and that was because some of them just bloomed by themselves a little too early. But now it is spectacular, if I do say so myself. Look at that yellow orange guy all by himself right there. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, that's sunshine. Oh, this guy yeah, right here. That one yeah, isn't it beautiful? That out, is, yeah. I think that, I'm not sure. That might have been an interloper. <laughs> so we're going to walk along here. I'm going slower. And this, this is a fun little fact. This one right here is called Akabono. Say what? Akabono. <laughs> I think it's probably a Japanese name. It's got that beautiful yellow, yellow foliage or yellow petals, but tinged in red on the end. Ooh, a a great, yeah, a great color echo. I love that. So I'm going to appreciate these as I walk along the wall, not only to appreciate them, but also to look and see if there's anything else that I might want to cut from in the garden. And I spy a couple of things that might also have that kind of vibe of the Encore azaleas. And that is a couple of stems of Kaleidoscopabilia. Okay, so this has that look, that early spring look of woody meets emerging leaf growth that I just love. So I'm going to cut a few of that, and the more I cut, believe me, the fuller this will get. Obsession Nandina for me is more of a fall thing, but I'm going to round the corner. Can we take a second to enjoy the fact that the light has already lasted this long? Yeah, the light is just incredible <laughs> today. Really, really incredible. It's making everything pop. And then why don't we take a break here and I will meet you back on the other side. Okay, well come on up to the upper terrace. I still have, I still have to clean up after topiaring my sunshine ligustrum. 
and I will do that a little bit later, but it is happy, happy work because everything looks so beautiful out here. So I'm going to let Stuart just kind of give you a glimpse of the pretty garden while I come over here and I clip some branches from these encores that have some more blooms. Isn't that bird song amazing? I really want the encores to be the star of this composition and I'm going to cut some of these blooms over here you see I've got some of these I think this is the moonlight encore but look at how prettily that's coming together that's cool. and how the just the different foliage looks just so gorgeous and so springy so I am going to cut just a few and the nice thing the thing i love about encore azaleas is i know i can cut from them and i don't have to be stingy because since they rebloom i will have plenty more flowers to cut look at how pretty that is it's a perfect shot isn't that gorgeous <laughs> isn't that gorgeous while i'm here i might cut a little daffodil to play in the mix. This is what I call kind of um, gardening by Tussie Mussie, where you just hold something in your hand and you put it together in a composition. And if it looks beautiful in your hand, then it will probably look beautiful in a vase. Now, how springy does that look? And again, I could get a completely different feel. You, you concentrate on that, Stuart. I'm gonna come <laughs> over here. I could get a completely different feel in my Easter bouquet if I used a different color. Oh, yeah. And I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of grooving on that white. It definitely but changed. look at how different it would change if I right. brought if I brought in pinks. It works really well. And I believe this is pink carnation. It will get more intensity of color a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But really, for, for as far as a shrub goes, encore azaleas are absolutely indispensable. And as much because I love the looks of their stem as anything else. Um, and even on occasion, even if I don't have any other blooms, if it's a time of year when the encores aren't in bloom, maybe even in winter, a lot of times I will just use the stems and then I will add my own blooms. So Stuart, what do you say? Let's take these beauties to the back and put together our centerpiece. Okay, I have all of my beautiful cuttings with Encore Azalea stems kind of being the diva in this Easter basket composition. <laughs> I'm just using kind of a, oh, a rustic, rustic meets delicate, kind of a high-low vibe. I just have two of these galvanized buckets and I'm going to make two starting with this one right now. So all I've done is just got my cuttings here and then I'm just gonna start playing kind of using the azalea as a framework because in addition to being beautiful with this dark kind of amber color stem, it also makes good structural support for the other things that I put in. Now I'm going to take my pruners and I'm gonna do a vertical cut right there so that it can absorb 
the water more easily. See what I did there? Okay. And then I'm going to insert the cuttings into this wood pulp oasis. Now I've told you guys about this before and I like it a lot better than the other synthetic stuff. It's compostable and I think it'll work fine. And ignore all, <laughs> just ignore all of the activity. Yes, yeah, Stuart, Stuart, I don't know. We may have to shoot this again, but I apologize. There's just always activity. And right now I think we've got some weed eaters. It will probably fade out over time. Okay, so right here, maybe I should just go quiet. I should just go quiet. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I like to put in the azalea stems first, again, because they are woody and they are a good support system. The other thing is, is I kind of like to put them around the perimeter so that they will kind of overhang. Can you see that, that wood pulp yeah, uh, in yeah. there? Shot yeah, yeah. And I have really, really, hydrated it. It's been soaking for about an hour. And I, of course, will keep watering this. And I'll probably have to zhuzh it a little bit before Easter because we're still a week out. But I'll probably have to zhuzh this arrangement so it still looks beautiful in time for Easter. But why is that easy to do? Because these are all cuttings of azaleas from my garden. And this wood pulp makes it really easy to insert them so that they kind of torque or arch in the direction you want them to go. It has a very real organic look too. It does. It's very, we would call that constant spry. And Ooh. constant spry was just a wonderful Victorian time um, floral designer. And she was the one who made cuttings from our gardens, a more gardeny look, if you will, she was the one who really popularized that. Prior to that, it was more kind of, I don't know, kind of FTD looking. Ooh, that's a gorgeous branch right there. And you know what, Stuart, while we are waiting for the noise to go away, why don't you so show some pretty pictures of the Encore Azalea arrangement we made a couple of falls ago, and it was Encore Azaleas and Apples. of mine I really like I, I really like this white the ones that I've planted in the front are largely white um, and a friend of mine who only plants white in her garden has planted a lot of I believe it was moonlight or it might have been one of the other varieties because you know Encore has so many different varieties and different hues might have been autumn lily Yes, also Linda. <laughs> Linda, Linda Cavanaugh. Now, I want a little bit of verticality and I want to play up. Oh, that was cool, just how sparse they are on it the whole way up. Yeah, yeah. That reminds me of Dr. Seuss. Yeah, and I may tuck a little bunny or something in here. Now, a trick that I'm going to use for these daffodils is... Ah, something got in my ears. Something got gotcha. you. <laughs> something got gotcha. you. I noticed that the mosquitoes are already out. Oh no, I thought I might have just built one. So a tip, when I insert the daffodils, first what I want to do is take something woody and puncture it so that when I get ready to put the daffodil in place, there's already a hole for it to go. Oh, because it's not a very sturdy Because stem. It, the stem is not sturdy, it's a lot softer. Ah, good advice. That was a tip. It never fails that when we are ready, when we are ready to meet you guys and shoot, that somebody has to come and blow. And we wait till they were finished, but you know, I'm getting ready to go to the Home and Garden Show here shortly and meet a bunch of you. So we're trying to get this done. So how's it looking, Stuart? Beautiful. So this is where I need to kind of go like this. 
it's kind of oriented that way. And then I will finish this up. Here is one. And then I will do the big reveal of the both of them on my Easter table, which I am so thrilled, Stuart. I may have not been able to have Thanksgiving out here in the back, but I am definitely gonna be able to have Easter at least thus far. That is what the weatherman is telling me. And I've got a big crowd coming over. So this kind of garden vibe will just be perfect. I like the way that looks. I think it looks very sweet, very, very springy, very befitting the holiday and the season, and all with cuttings from my own garden, starring the lovely Encorzelia. So there you go. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I love it. It is garden fresh. Encore azaleas are simply brilliant. I love it. Uh, make sure to come back and see what it looks like in the context of my beautiful Easter table. I think we're going to be able to uh, serve and have Easter outdoors. At least that's what the weatherman is telling me. Maybe not Thanksgiving, but definitely Easter. Also make sure to tune in this Wednesday because it's going to be all about boxwood. I'm going to start talking about better boxwood, um, the blight resistant box with, but also lots, answer lots of questions I've been getting about boxwood in general. So just stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend.